What if I told you that a teenager who never finished high school just solved one of Africa's biggest problems using nothing but trash, and the experts say it's impossible? This system generates electricity using air. To make a light bulb illuminate, I use power stored in bottles. I experiment with magnetic power to determine how much electricity I can produce. After that, I generate power based on the number of houses I want to supply. In Malawi, one of the poorest countries on Earth, only 14% of people have electricity. But in rural areas, that number drops to just 4%. That means 96 out of every 100 people living outside the cities wake up in total darkness, go to bed in total darkness, and spend their hard-earned money on batteries and candles just to see at night. This is the world Ernest Andrew was born into, a world where the national power grid stops just two kilometers from his village, close enough to see, but impossible to reach. And at 18 years old, after dropping out of school because his family couldn't afford the fees, Ernest did something that scientists and engineers are still scratching their heads about. He built a generator that powers homes without fuel, without oil, and without batteries, using air. Ernest Andrew grew up in Shinguo village in Dawa district, Malawi. If you've never heard of Malawi, it's a small landlocked country in Southeast Africa. Beautiful place, but struggling hard. The kind of place where families grow their own food just to survive, where droughts can wipe out everything, and where electricity is a luxury most people will never have. Ernest Village sits just two kilometers away from Dawa Town, where the electricity ends. Two kilometers. That's about a 20-minute walk. Close enough to know what you're missing, but far enough that no one cares to extend the grid to reach you. Growing up, Ernest was always curious. His father, Andrea Chinguo, remembers how from a young age, Ernest loved playing with wires, batteries, and old radio parts. While other kids were playing outside, Ernest was taking things apart to see how they worked. But in 2018, when Ernest was in his second year of secondary school, his family hit a wall. They couldn't afford the school fees anymore. So at 15 or 16 years old, Ernest had to drop out. No more education, no more classrooms. Most kids in that situation would give up. Maybe find work on a farm, maybe just accept that this is how life is. But Ernest didn't. For the next six years, Ernest became obsessed with one problem. Every night, his family and neighbors spent money they didn't have on candles, kerosene lamps, and batteries just to have a little bit of light. His mother, Evelyn Chinguo, would buy candles and batteries instead of food or other things the family needed, and Ernest watched this happen every single day. Meanwhile, just two kilometers away, people in Dawa Town had lights at the flip of a switch. It ate at him, the unfairness of it. The waste of it. The fact that 84% of Malavians live in rural areas, but 94% of rural areas have no electricity. So Ernest started experimenting. He didn't have textbooks. He didn't have teachers. He didn't have YouTube tutorials or online classes. What he had was an endless junkyard and a mind that refused to quit. He collected rusty bicycle parts, old transformer boxes, used plastic bottles, and whatever wires he could find. His neighbors thought he was losing his mind. In his local language, they called him Misala, which means crazy. They watched this dropout kid collect garbage and wire it together in his backyard. Some laughed. Some felt sorry for him. But Ernest kept working. The idea was simple in theory but nearly impossible in practice. Ernest wanted to use air to generate electricity. Not wind turbines like you see in Europe or America. Something different. He explained it like this. Air fills a bottle where wires inside produce an electromagnetic field. That magnetic field generates electricity that gets transmitted through cables and poles to houses. He says it produces 1, 000 volts, enough to power lights, charge phones, and run small appliances. Now here's where it gets wild. Experts don't believe him. Electrical engineers have publicly said they don't understand how it works. Ali Kotumba, an electrical engineer, said on record, What type of air is he using? We don't know. What is the air doing to produce power? We don't know. How is he using the air in his system to produce electricity? We don't know, and he is not saying. Some experts think Ernest is protecting his invention from being copied. Others think there's something else going on that he can't explain or doesn't understand himself. But here's what nobody can deny. The lights are on. Three months before the news broke in early 2024, Ernest finally succeeded. After six years of trial and error, six years of people calling him crazy, six years of working with trash and hope, he got it to work. He connected his parents' house first. Then his neighbors started asking questions. Mary Firim, one of his neighbors, admitted she doubted him at first. She said, 
I was among those who were doubting his ability to generate electricity which we can use in our homes. But when I saw that he had managed to connect to his parents' house, that is when I asked him to connect to my house too. Now life is simple. One by one, Ernest connected more homes. Nine houses at first, then fifteen. Then he connected Kongwe to primary school, the school he had to drop out of years before. Now kids who couldn't afford batteries or candles could study at night. Ronix Kaite, an 18-year-old student, said, I no longer spend money on batteries for lighting. We are able to study for as long as we want. Ernest's mother, Evelyn, was emotional about it. She said, Previously, we lived in the dark. The money we used to buy candles and batteries is now being used for other important things. Think about that for a second. These families were spending money they desperately needed just to see at night. And now they're free from that burden. Joyce Fury, another neighbor, is so relieved to have electricity that she's planning to start a business charging people's phones and cooking with electricity to make money. This invention didn't just bring light. It brought opportunity. Word spread fast. Local newspapers picked up the story. Then, international media. Voice of America sent reporters. The Malawi government took notice. Ibrahim Batola, Malawi's Minister of Energy, came to visit Ernest in his village. He praised the invention and said, Such innovations can make us achieve access to electricity. But not only access, but also affordability and sustainability. The district government donated training and supplies to help Ernest work safely. The National Commission for Science and Technology said they want to catalog Ernest's work and connect him with investors. But the most interesting part of this story is that Ernest reminds everyone of another Malawian inventor. His name is William Kamkwamba. Back in 2001, when William was 14 years old, Malawi was hit by a terrible drought and famine. His family couldn't afford to send him to school either. So William spent his days in the local library reading books he couldn't fully understand because they were in English. He found a textbook called Using Energy with a picture of a windmill on the cover. Using only the pictures in that book, William built a windmill out of scrap metal, bicycle parts, and tractor pieces. It brought electricity to his family's home and pumped water for their crops. His story became so famous that he wrote a best-selling book called Called the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Netflix made a movie about him. He went to college in America, and now he runs an organization called the Moving Windmills Project that helps young innovators across Malawi. Ernest's story echoes Williams in so many ways. Both dropped out of school because of money. Both faced droughts and poverty. Both were called crazy by their neighbors. Both used junk and scrap materials. And both succeeded against impossible odds. The difference is that William's windmill was based on existing technology that he adapted. Ernest's air power generator is something engineers still can't fully explain. There's a bigger picture here too. Malawi is trying to reach 70% electricity access by 2030 as part of something called Sustainable Development Goal 7. Right now, they're at 14%. They need massive change, and they need it fast. The government has launched programs like the NGY Ngui Fund, which gives money to off-grid solar companies to make electricity more affordable. They're installing solar panels, building mini-grids, and trying everything they can think of. But progress is slow. Really slow and expensive. That's why Ernest's invention matters so much. If it works the way he says it does, and if it can be scaled up, it could change everything. Not just for Malawi, but for every country struggling with energy access. Ernest isn't stopping either. He's already working on his next project. He wants to build a generator that can pump water from 200 meters away. He wants to extend electricity to the entire school. He wants to connect every house in his village. His vision is bigger than just his community too. He said, My vision is to see Malawi developing and see young people having things to do in their daily life. If they have electricity, they will open up businesses and employ others. This kid gets it. Electricity isn't just about lights. It's about opportunity, jobs, education, and breaking the cycle of poverty. But let's be real for a second. There's still a lot of skepticism. Scientists and engineers want to study Ernest's system properly. They want to understand exactly how it works. Some think he's found something genuinely new. Others think there's a more conventional explanation that just isn't being communicated well. Either way, what matters is that it's working in his village right now. People who lived in darkness for their entire lives now have light. Kids can study. Adults can work after sunset. Families are saving money. And one dropout teenager made it happen with trash and determination. So what can we learn from Ernest Andrew? First, poverty doesn't mean powerlessness. Ernest had nothing, no money, no education, no resources, but he had curiosity and he had persistence. 
Second, sometimes the craziest ideas are the ones worth trying. Everyone called him insane for six years. He kept going anyway. Third, you don't need permission to solve problems. Ernest didn't wait for the government or foreign aid or a miracle. He started with what he had. And fourth, age doesn't matter. Ernest is 18 or 19 years old depending on the report. He's already changing lives while most people his age are still figuring out what to do with theirs. There are millions of Ernest Andrews out there, kids in villages with no electricity, no internet, no opportunities but massive potential. Most of them will never get the chance to show what they can do. That's the real tragedy. Not the lack of resources but the waste of human potential. Ernest got lucky that his story went viral. But how many others are out there right now, working on the next big thing and nobody will ever hear about them? This story matters because it reminds us that innovation doesn't only come from Silicon Valley or top universities. It comes from people who need solutions so badly that they'll spend six years building them out of junk. It comes from teenagers who refuse to accept the world as it is. And it comes from places you'd never expect if you just give people a chance. Ernest Andrews' air-powered generator might not change the whole world, but it changed his world. And sometimes that's enough. If this story inspired you, the next video is even crazier.